this vlog is special for two reasons. First of all, I'm shooting the entire vlog using a GoPro and I've never done that before. We've had the GoPro for a while. We only used it once this summer and I was really impressed with the results. So now we're really gonna put it to the test. And second, I am doing this vlog alone. So Sandra is not traveling with me. I'm not gonna be alone though. This is a work trip, so I'm gonna be amongst colleagues. So I'm not gonna be able to vlog the entire trip. But first of all, I'm gonna take a three hour flight from Malaga, Spain to Dublin Island. And here I only have a short stopover before I have to board a seven and a half hour flight to New York City. And this city is packed with famous landmarks, buildings, sites. But I'm not gonna focus on them in this vlog. Instead, I'm gonna find 10 unusual quirky things that I think are worth visiting while you are in New York. So there won't be any footage of the place right behind me here, Times Square. Front Zero, Wall Street. Brooklyn Bridge and there way way back in the distance is the Statue of Liberty Fifth Avenue Rockefeller Center the Empire State Building the Radio City Music Hall Flatiron Building this here right behind me is the building that Eddie Murphy and our senior hall moves to in coming to America good morning my neighbors and fuck you yes yes fuck you too it's kind of off the beaten path, but we live kind of close. It's in Brooklyn. So if you are in the neighborhood, it might be a fun thing to see. We made it to a toy store. It might not be the thing that you expect to be on a top 10 list of things to do and see in a city. But you and us, tell the nice people why we're here. Uh, we made it to Toy Tokyo, which is a, let's call it a collector's toy store, where they have all sorts of vintage and new and rare toys so we're going to have a look and see what we uh, might bring home thank you very much this is just crazy there are so many things big it is. The Grateful Dead lunchbox. Wow. It's not the biggest store, but there are so many things in here. It's amazing. People actually buy this. I think it's so cool. <laughs> Buck Rogers Disintegrator. I would love to have that one. I got all the necessities, obviously. I got some superhero caps. I got a super fancy servant server cap. And of course, I got the, uh, the dumpster fire. So all in all, I'd say great success. Town on the east side of Manhattan and this right here behind me is Sniffer Court. So that's important and significant for one reason. This is where they took the cover photo for one of the more significant 60s albums. The door second album Strange Day. Unfortunately the members of the doors were in the picture. They had some circus act doing weird things in the alleyway behind me. But still, it's one of those places you must visit if you're ever in New York. It's always time for record stores. Never go home from a trip without buying some records. If you like me or into the 60s and 70s music scene or pop culture scene, this place needs no introduction. This was home to many of the famous people back in the days, like Bob Dylan, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. The list goes on forever. It's often also listed as one of the more haunted houses of New York, and there's been unclear deaths. The most famous death that occurred in this hotel is, of course, Nancy, Sid Vicious' girlfriend, whom he allegedly stabbed to death. 
This is the studio that Jimi Hendrix built in the 60s and he also recorded some of his albums here. And after his passing, a lot of other artists and acts has recorded here, major acts. Can you imagine being a fly on the wall here throughout time and listen in on the sessions that has taken place here? Man, I would love to do that. Real quick, we have recently partnered up with iVisa simply because we really appreciate the service that they provide. And now you can get 10% off your next purchase. If you, just like us, love to travel, you know that getting the right travel documents sometimes can be difficult. iVisa is a one-stop shop where you quickly can check if you meet the requirements and to see what options are available for your next destination. So instead of dealing with embassies, you can spend your time planning for your next adventure. To get the 10% discount, you must apply via exploringplanethome.com. Click on the link and your discount is activated. And back to the vlog. This is another iconic music site you must visit if you're in New York and you're into the 60s music scene. Cafe Wa was the place where a lot of the big 60s acts were discovered. It's the first place that Bob Dylan was playing at when he arrived in New York. And it's also the place where Jimi Hendrix was discovered by Chas Chandler. Other famous acts that has been playing here is Velvet Underground. Bruce Springsteen has played here. Loving Spoonful. The list goes on forever. So this place has a fantastic history. And they still have live music acts here, I think, every night. So if you're in New York and you have a night to spare, I would definitely recommend getting a table and watch a live band playing at the Cafe One. It could pretty much be any building here in New York City, but this one is special. This building is on the cover photo of the Led Zeppelin album, Fiscal Graffiti. There are many places in New York City where they have taken cover photos for many different albums. But this one is Led Zeppelin. We're at Rivington, Ludlow Street, and this is the last album cover site in this vlog, I promise. This here, right behind me, is the building that's on the so cover of the Beastie Boy album called Boutique. And I mean, Beastie Boys are just one of those really iconic New York bands. So if you're even remotely interested in music, you must see this place if you're in New York. One more record store can't hurt, right? Normally when you visit the site in a city, it's the biggest, the largest, the longest, the deepest. This is the complete opposite. This is the narrowest building in New York. It's so narrow that the number is actually half. It's 75 and a half. still quite impressed with it. There are three things that sticks out. First of all, the stabilization. It's really good. I'm really impressed with the way it handles movement. The second thing that I like about it is the sheer size of it. It's so small compared to the gear we normally use when we do these blocks. And the third thing is kind of a weakness and a strength combined. The image is somewhat artificial or distorted color-wise, but in a good way. I like it. It's more like an effect. The bad thing about it is that you cannot choose the effect. It's there all the time. That being said, there are a couple of things that I don't like about it as well. First of all, the ability to zoom in. I really miss it. The second one has to do with the zooming as well. If you want to capture a landscape or a bigger scene, everything gets so tiny. And that combined with the lack of zoom feature, gives you so little possibilities to actually capture the scenery, especially in a city like New York. And lastly, the audio. There's a little delay from when you push record until the audio actually starts to be recorded. That's so annoying. And also the audio in itself, it's not the best. It's really a nifty camera to have. And I will definitely keep it in my bag, but I will keep using the rig that we normally use in the future vlogs. Thank you so much for watching. It's been so much fun being around New York and trying to 
identify the more unusual sites of the city and of course there are so many more sites than the 10 that I show in this vlog. Next week we will be back and then it's a normal vlog again and I'm so glad that Sandra's gonna be with me again. Please hit that subscribe button, don't forget to like and share with your friends. See ya!